If you listen to hip hop or a lot of the underground artists these days, you are probably used to hearing this producer tag literally everywhere. I'm working, I'm dying. Now in this video, I'm going to cover how this producer collective managed to literally take over the hip hop scene. The group working on Dying was founded in 2012 by Filthy and his younger brother Ugi Main. But at the time, it wasn't named Working on Dying yet. The group would really start coming together when the producer Forza would move in a few houses down from Filthy and his brother in middle school. The three of them would start skating together to school. This is when the trio would then bring in Brandon Finessen when they met him in ninth grade. I also think it's important to add in that Ugi, Brandon, and Forza all went to school with Lil Uzi Vert, which I will explain later on. Around this time, Filthy would learn to make beats. He would practice for around six months on FL Studio before teaching his friends the basics of the program. Then throughout that year, they all started to learn the basics of production. Then Filthy and Ugi would meet Lucy Man through one of their god brothers. As Lucy Man was a rapper at the time, the trio began making music in the brother's basement. It was then Lucy who came up with the name Working on Dying in 2013. I was just I was just in the driver's seat of my car. It was mad cold, mad snowy, my a or not AC, my heat wasn't working. I had a heat. glass of whiskey in my left hand, I had a steering wheel on my right. And I was like, damn, I'm really working on dying right now. Like, oh yeah, my, my dad died that year. My dad oh. died the day after I turned 18. It was lit. How'd he die? In a bad way, That's cancer. Geez. Really? Yeah, it was fucked up, it was super bad. Yeah. The name Working on Dying was originally going to be used for Lucy Man's mixtape, but then Filthy persuaded him to use it as the group's name. Ugi Man was the first in the group to have a notable placement. In 2013, Ugi Man produced songs for Xavier Wolf and Chris Travis. Then the group would release their debut tape at the start of 2014, named The Lucy Man Presents Working on Dying. I don't even know how to explain what genre this tape is. It's basically songs with calm ambient synths mixed with vocals from rappers Lil B and Gucci Mane. I'll just play a snippet so you know what I'm talking about. Don't you like my chain? Working on dying. My chain, my chain. Don't you like my chain, my young Gucci Mane? Then I'm popping up the chain. I would also like to mention, at this time, Forza was not heavily involved in the group, as he was more focused on personal interests. Then after the release of their debut mixtape, the group would start making connections within the underground scene. At the time, they would be reaching out to Black Cray and Goth Money Records. Filthy would be the main organiser of this, he would send them beats, he even booked a Goth Money and Stomp Mob for his shows in his hometown Philadelphia. Then in August, the group would gain even more recognition when Ugi Main worked on the production of Lil Uzi Vert's debut mixtape, The Real Uzi. Talking about recognition, I would appreciate if you could ask a subscriber as it helps out a ton. It's much appreciated. But unfortunately for the group, Lil Uzi Vert blew up too fast and they lost contact with him. Working on Dying had spent the whole of 2015 making connections to different artists within the underground scene. And at the time, their main collaborations were Black Cray, Marcy Main, and Kane Groceries, who were all part of Goth Money Records. With their connections to Goth Money Records, Working on Dying would also get placements on booty chains and Goonie Chonga songs. The music Working on Dying was producing at the time was seen as some of the rawest in the underground. And now that Working on Dying had placements on songs with at the time some of the underground's biggest artists, they were ready to release Working on Dying 2. Produced by Filthy and Lucy Man, Working on Dying 2 would release on the 11th of November in 2015. This project would give us an insight into Working on Dying's early sound, but unlike the first project, this mixtape would contain actual artists on the songs. With all these connections to different people in the underground, Working on Dying could develop their sound from a more slow ambient sound to something more fast paced and raw. This is when the new genre would arise. Tread. The new sound was shown to the underground when Filthy and Black Cray, who is also known as Sick Boy Rari, came together in late 2015 to release Shitty Sick Boy. Then the whole of Working on Dying came together to work on a second tape with Sick Boy Rari, named Working Out the Mud, which kickstarted the whole Tread era. At this time, these two projects were seen as revolutionary to the underground sound. Working on Dying absolutely destroyed this, like in a good way. This new high tempo style that they created just sounds amazing. Now around 2016 and 2017, 
is where Worker on Dying started to make a real impact, as they developed their sound from making synth-heavy ambient beats to their fast-paced tread style, the tread era was starting to take over the underground. Worker on Dying would start working with artists such as Lil Yachty, Lucky, Lil Peep and Lil Tracy. Worker on Dying first realised the impacts they were having when they visited LA in 2016. During this time, Filthy was sleeping on the couch in Lil Peep's and Lil Tracy's house. The Worker on Dying crew would perform at a warehouse show where they realised everybody was catching on to their tread sound. This was when Worker on Dying knew that they had made an impact. From coming together and making beats in a Filthy's basement, to creating their own genre and having some of the underground's top artists perform their music in front of hundreds of people. Now with the group's producer tags being associated with underground classics, the Worker on Dying collective grew exponentially. They became one of the most sought after producers within the underground, but that wasn't enough for them. They wanted to go mainstream, and the youth from their hometown would provide this opportunity. In 2017, Forza would find the viral star, Matt Ox, who was just 11 at the time. I mean, just imagine that. This kid was 11 and he was being brought in to make music with Worker on Dying. It's just insane. The two parties would start making music, where eventually Matt Ox and Oogie Main managed to make a viral hit. Overwhelming. Posted in the trip too, got us where I'm flexing Feeling what I'm ripping, oh we many killed it The song currently sits on 30 million views, which again, is just insane this guy was literally a superstar at 11 years old. Matt Ox was being mentioned in every mainstream publication and even performed alongside Chief Keef in LA. And in 2017, Worker on Dying were also reunited with Lil Uzi Vert. After Uzi finished his tour that year, he came back to Philly to record of Worker on Dying. Then as 2017 went past, Matt Ox kept getting bigger and bigger. And as Matt Ox grew, Worker on Dying and their tread genre were at the brink of ascending into the mainstream. The entire world was about to witness the talent of Working on Dying. Then a couple months after Overwhelming blew up, one of Drake's affiliates contacted Oogie Main asking for beats. Oogie, who was currently working at Urban Outfitters, first thought it was a troll, so he just sent over a pack from 2015, but it all became very real when Drake followed him and sent him a DM, saying that they just made a hit. This is when Worker and Dying knew the hard work paid off and they officially made it. This Drake placement would spiral the group into success. After Drake's I'm Upset peaked at number 7 on the Billboard Hot 100, Oogie Main, Forza and Brandon Finessin would all make a reunion with their high school friend Lil Uzi Vert and produce hundreds of tracks with him, including mainstream hits such as Sanguine Paradise and That's a Rack. Oogie would then go on to produce tracks on Juice Souls and Future's World on Drugs and also produced for Playboy Carti. But in 2019, controversy arose for the group when parts of Lil Uzi Vert's A Turtle The Take began to leak online. Unfortunately, it came out that Uzi's high school friend and worker and dying producer, Forza, was leaking the songs. Obviously, this meant out Forza was kicked out of the group and was no longer on A Turtle The Take. Then 2020 arose. It was standard for working on dying producers to be seen with mainstream superstars. Brandon Finessin and Oogie Main were both seen on the production credits of Lil Uzi's Eternal Take and also Future and Lil Uzi Vert's Pluto X Baby Pluto. Then on the 4th of December in 2020, Worker on Dying would release their third project, Waiting to Die, featuring artists such as Lancey Foe and Lucky. Also, this is not confirmed, but I think this is around the time Fax only joined the group. Fax wasn't an original member of the group, but he is now listed as part of the collective and did produce on Waiting to Die, so I think this is around the time period that he joined the group. Then on Christmas Day in 2020, Playboy Carsey would drop his highly anticipated Whole Lot of Red. This project really got Filthy's name into the mainstream. Filthy did an insane job on Whole Lot of Red. Filthy produced the majority of the songs on the project and was seen as a standout producer on the album with his addicting rage style beats. Then in 2021, the producer Benny X would join the Worker on Dying Collective. Benny X is usually recognized for his work with Yee and Lancy Foe. Then more recently in 2022 and 2023, as usual, Worker on Dying are out here producing hits after hits for the biggest rappers in the game. Filthy and Oogie Main managed to land a placement on Drake's and 21 Savage's Her Loss, which released on the 4th of November in 2022. Benny X also managed to produce the Drake single Search and Rescue, which released on the 7th of April in 2023. Filthy and Benny X also closely worked with Yeet on the production of his three most recent projects, Two Alive, Life and Afterlife. Then Brandon Finessin and Oogie Main produced songs of Lil Uzi's Red and White Tape, and they will probably be working on the production of Lil Uzi's Pink Tape. And that's pretty much it for working on dying. They've got themselves out of Filthy's basement to being one of the most in-demand producers in hip-hop right now. I would even go to say that they are running the hip-hop game right now. If you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.